Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we complete a bracket challenge to determine the best bourbon enhancer. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Katie Proof, Ryan Thompson, and Lenny Eckstein will be coming later. Maybe. Hey, gang, what's up? Hey, guys. What's up, guys? Oh, yes, we got word from Lenny. He is on the way, so uh, he forgot we were recording. He was still at his distillery. He's left. He's en route right now. He doesn't live very far from the distillery, so he should be here popping in any minute. Uh, this but Someone uh, has to be fashionably late, right? It's not right. a party unless someone's it, fashionably it, late. We've so. never done this where someone hasn't been late. Now, usually it's Katie. <laughs> now, the last two times, though, Katie showed up an hour early the last time. That's and right. Had, <laughs> and she was on time, so I don't know what to <laughs> think. Anymore. I, I've got to admit early. something here real quick. <laughs> Uh, I've shown up a week early before. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, is the, that is the record. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I sure have. Been sitting here by myself like two, three, four, five minutes ago. But I'm like, Akeley's never late, let alone everyone else. And I have to check the show notes. I'm like, are oh. you kidding me? I'm a week early. <laughs> a week early. You'd think you'd have staff to uh, stop that kind of stuff. I know. Uh, I need to talk to him about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look at that lamp behind Ryan. I bet you that's like an heirloom thing. That's a, that's probably a million dollar lamp. I bet. <laughs> probably so. Huh? Yeah, that thing. You no, know, it's a, not usually back there, but I had to move it for uh, Christmas decor, right? So. Uh, oh, okay. Christmas yeah. decor. Yeah. Staff was so, decorating uh, for the holiday party, so yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, very so, nice. So that's why very it's nice. back there. It, it, it hasn't found its way back to its original uh, home, so that's why it's there. Okay. But, it, it does does uh, accent the uh, backdrop kind of nicely, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it's, it is nice. It is nice. So we've got a, a bracket challenge we're going to be doing today about the best bourbon enhancers. I, I thought that was a funny term. It was from a tasting table article. So I just pulled on. I, they had more than this. I pulled what I thought were the best eight and uh, put them on a, a list. And we'll we'll bracket challenge them and see what is actually the best of the bunch. And we'll get to that, though, after the break. For right now, Ryan said there's something you want to talk about. What is that, sir? Yeah, it's something I'm really curious about, and it's uh, uh, something that comes up in conversation every now and again with uh, with some folks. But I'd like to discuss everybody's uh, email inbox for a minute. Okay. How many unopened emails on average do you guys have? Is there a possibility of getting to inbox zero, if you will? <laughs> No. And if you can, how long does it last? <laughs> I never get to zero. <laughs> I clear my app every single morning. I cannot stand a notification on my phone. I don't really? always read them, but I go through and like mass delete stuff unless it looks like it's from someone important. Oh, I interesting. Every single morning. I can't stand like you have the people like 2000 plus on their like I would throw my phone away. There is no way I could look at that every day can't do it oh, that's, you, just, you turn off the notifications so that the mail but, app just no well, longer says a number oh yeah. i didn't know that was an option I yeah just do that your life will be uh, stress-free <laughs> oh. like oh wait i may maybe i just got really good at ignoring mine because mine still says 2505 yeah no oh. i would literally wow. just throw even, yeah, even the it. phone yeah. voicemails i don't get to that that's also sitting in there nope. no yeah not 
I, I can't have anything with a notification. Like my ADHD is like, what's that? What's that? We got to look at it. I would get nothing. 16,990. <laughs> I'm not getting through those anytime soon. <laughs> Start a new life. Wow. <laughs> a new life. Yeah, just walk it. away. Yeah. Walk away from just quickly and just start anew. <laughs> At least a new email address. You don't have to start a whole new yeah. life. New email <laughs> that legitimately works. The greatest thing about changing careers is that I had a new email address and I'm able to keep the new one at zero. And right. I'm determined to keep it there. The old one still has 634 sitting in it that just will never get answered now. But right. right. Hey, can, can we share that number that is on your phone right now? Yeah. Yeah. 16,000 plus. Is that all emails like from spam and social and, and personal and favorites and all that? Or it's a, is it's that? A, it is a mixture of uh, unresponded to uh, emails from people, from uh, events, from you name it. So, yeah, yeah, a little bit, little bit of everything in there for sure. Some, uh, you know, places that you bought, I uh, bought stuff from and, and it's in there. So, yeah, that's a whole thing. Yeah, that's right. a, little bit of, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I have like six email addresses that I or use yeah. about eight yeah, I more know. that I don't even use. I and know. that causes or, I have four hundred and fourteen unread emails in my inbox that just by searching Akeley. <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, huh? Yeah, this is yeah. why I miss things. That he's like, yeah. "Hey, did you hear about this update?" Sure didn't. <laughs> no, no, that's why. Yes, that's it's like my mom sends an email then calls you. Did you get my email? <laughs> Uh, right. That's appreciated. Yes. Thank you. Those are the yeah, ones I get yeah. to. I'm not even like, sure. Hey, I Should I just cut it out and just call then, though? I don't I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Lenny's joined us, by the way, now. So Lenny's here. Yeah. I'm here. We're Sorry for that. Uh, Crazy. It happens. It happens. I've missed my own shows before. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, what are you going to do? That's bad now. Yeah. So we're just talking. Uh, so so Ryan asked the question you're right here for uh, small, show number one, Small Talk. So I don't know if you heard us talking about email and how many how many you have yeah I, you know i i did and well, i was do you thinking, answer all of them or what, what do you do a hundred percent no uh but okay. i will say i only have 63 emails in my inbox right now down from like 963 and uh what? unopened no, lenny or total uh unopened huh. yeah. yeah uh and i would say that i you know like I don't, I'm not much one, one much for, for resolutions, but, uh, a while back, so this kind of came up and, uh, McNew, you said something about, you're like, oh, you have to unsubscribe from those. And I felt like that got etched into my mind as like wisdom. <laughs> like, oh, bye -bye. I'm like, <laughs> Look at right. that. <laughs> yeah. So anytime I unsubscribe, I think about McNew. I'm like, she's, oh, she, yeah. McDude did yeah. that. She taught you because that. Because everything you've ever bought online in your entire life, or even in person, they have your email now. And I'm like, stop it. I bought the one thing and it wasn't even for me. Like, stop emailing me. Never stop come to me. Well, you know what I have way more of, though? And this isn't like, I don't think people really measure this, but uh, in my, what's it called? Like, uh, well, photos, like the Apple photo program. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I went to get a new iPhone and they're migrating everything over, the kid at AT and T store saw the number of photos and his eyes bugged out. Said he was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, really? oh, "I don't know, man. I screenshot everything and I take pictures of lots of stuff. I don't edit. I just leave them all there." He was oh, blown. Was like, how much? How much iCloud space do you have to pay for? Uh, I don't even pay attention. I don't know. It's like I don't know, ten terabytes or something. <laughs> 10 terabytes that is a lot because like yeah. i have nineteen thousand eight hundred ish photos and videos on my phone but i keep refusing to upgrade the icloud i'm like no i'm gonna pare those back down i'm gonna i'm gonna get rid of the extras yeah. and get back into my like one terabyte that i have or whatever it's yeah. been like that since september and i, <laughs> I haven't yeah. I'm just not i did that i fought it for like a year but they just keep bugging the piss out of you and finally i just was like okay go ahead and yeah it's been it it's back to like, quiet two dollars oh, yeah. a month to ten dollars or something i'm like yeah it's ten dollars a month now is what i'm paying to store yeah. a bunch of screenshots i don't need anymore it's ten dollars a month then they allow you to store everything for free for though. free so it's, <laughs> it's for free it's, yeah. so i'm gonna use some millennial math here yes it's ten dollars <laughs> right. a month that you pay but the the storage is then for free so and, it's nice you know what? and apple's so uh, free high. storage they'll send you receipts and they're like 9.99 to apple services and you don't even know what the hell it's for anymore right. and i get like three of those a month and i'm like Good, great. Paid for something. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, Ryan, you asked the question. How are you with email? I uh, I try to open and respond as uh, 
as quickly as possible. Um, I just checked my uh, work email and I've got 13 unopened. Whoa. Uh, I probably have a couple more in there that are open I need to respond to. I am proud of myself when I get to inbox zero, which is maybe twice a year, but it doesn't last very long. Uh, my personal email is completely different. I ignore half of those things. Uh, the majority of them are from places I bought stuff from or, or spam or whatever. So, But uh, certainly the business email I try to stay on top of and uh, make sure I respond in a timely manner. So, Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I do a better job on the, my business one. I, you know, obviously, yeah. you got to stay on top of that. People, people don't want to to be responded to two months later so yeah i try i try voicemails i try to get to at least listen to them once a day and uh make mm -hmm. sure i respond appropriately but um so i only have maybe one or two voicemails that i don't uh that are unlistened to but uh, certainly try to respond to those in a, a timely fashion so you're so okay. polite i never even listen to my voicemails those get immediately no. treated <laughs> <Really? No. laughs> not what i like to do is i send mcnew the text where you talk uh she, she loves those <laughs> <laughs> I will never listen to those. Weird concept. I know. I, I, yeah, I, I used to do that while I was driving before I had the thing integrated in my. Uh, now it's integrated in the car. It's no big deal. To, it'll do the voice to text yeah. thing. But but before and they didn't have that, and I would just do the thing where record your voice and then send it via text. I would send them to do that way, and then she apparently I didn't realize she hated it until she blasted me on the on one of these shows so yeah no, so the voice you know, my best friend will try to do it too and I'm just like she's like did you get that I'm like yeah and I deleted it you can text me what you need so I'm not doing it I do have a group friend a uh, group of friends that they're like oh it's too much to text and I get like four voice memos in a row and I'm like right. No, because then I have to like keep track of it because like I can check a text pretty much anywhere, but I can't just listen to a voice memo anywhere. Yeah. Like I can't be sitting in court and listen to a voice memo. That right. wouldn't go too well. That yeah, so it's it's a burden. It feels like it friend really over. is. It's rude to your friends. We don't want that. It's don't do rude. it. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, guess what, gang? It's time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with McNew. She seems like she was ready to go, and then maybe not. I'm going to do some Penelope Architect. Okay. Okay. Not a, not a lot going on there. We did hear something. That means you've got the lead. We'll uh, bounce it over to Lenny. I've got some uh, Still Austin single barrel. Okay. Okay. Solid for Lenny. Very solid. Could be enough. I'll go next. I've got the Larceny here. Larceny. I'm, I'm, I'm nice. How about that? So here we go. Uh, I think I got the lead. I got uh, unfortunately, the lead. that wasn't much to be proud of, but I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead, Ryan. Let's see if what you can do. This. Yeah, yeah, I'm one to talk, right? All right, let's see what you got, Ryan. Oh, I had a question for Lenny, buddy. Now there he is, no, back. Lenny. Where did you get that single barrel? Still Austin? Uh, at Total Wine in oh, did you? Nice. Colorado awesome. Boulevard. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I, Maybe. Uh, I mean, uh, a, a branch in Biller. Branch and barrel bourbon from our friends down in basically Denver. So, yeah, nice. Okay, no. Well, we heard it. We did hear it. We heard it. It was audible. Yeah. Ryan's it's a glass face cork, is, by the way. Not bad. It's deep. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> well, I, I'm oh, that that glass Those glass corks are tough. They're tough to yeah. get out of there sometimes. So, yeah. I, know. Yeah. I struggled with one last week. It took me, right. but I stabbed myself trying to get it. Saw yeah, she cut head. herself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We, had, we took down our accident free sign on the uh, Bourbon Daily. We had to take it down. Yeah. We got to start all over. So. Yeah, if we get through this show, we'll be at one now. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, Katie, how about you? I have some Yellowstone in my careful selection below 100 proof for January. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Oh. <laughs> I like the sound of the dog in the background. <laughs> that was nice, huh? It was panting for it. puts his mouth up to the microphone. He's like, what are you doing? Huh? But do you need my breathing in your background? I'm glad, I'm glad we clarified that was the dog and nobody yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Katie got it there. She she snuck in at the end and got it. So cheers to Katie. Cheers. All right. We'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, it is going to be bracket challenge time. Kind of a rarity these days. We'll do that in just a few. OK, 
Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Speaking of Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, the ABV Barrel Shop in St. Louis, Missouri has developed a unique partnership with the Stave and Thief Society to offer a preparatory class to assist you in getting your Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. This prep class costs only $25 and is available to take live or online via Zoom. Graduates of our class receive a coupon code good for 15% off your Executive Bourbon Steward Certification held in Louisville, Kentucky. This saves you almost $90. Additionally, you can collaborate with fellow attendees to split travel costs when you go to Louisville. If you're interested in signing up for the class, simply head over to abvbarrelshop.com and check out the classes and events page. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller and one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history, where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com. This is Mr. Bill. You're listening to the Bourbon Daily. I don't drink to that. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we have a bracket challenge to determine the best bourbon enhancer. Yes, we are. So if you are uh, of the belief that these things enhance your bourbon, uh, this is a great bracket challenge for you. And uh, the contenders are as follows. Ice. Ice, baby. Uh, bitters. Citrus. <laughs> citrus infusions and then you know like bacon fat fruit wood etc you know different things you could do to infuse uh water smoke proper glassware and letting it breathe which do you think enhances bourbon the most the matchups are going to look like this bitters will take on citrus smoke will take on water infusions will take on ice and proper glassware will take on letting it breathe it seemed like they they matched up far too nicely together. I don't know. I, it, I'd like to see a couple of these in the finals that are going to be paired against one another. So it's just how it works, though. So uh, in round number one, bitters will take on citrus. Uh, Katie, you're going to be first. What do you these, think is better? These are the hardest two for me, I would say, honestly, because I th I'm really focusing on the word enhance, enhance. not yes, just change, but enhance. Right. So I, here's a glass of bourbon, Katie. Here's the same yes. bourbon. And I've done this to it. Uh, this hopefully will make it better. So, yes. I I think bitters are incredibly important to a cocktail, but just for bourbon itself, I have my vote has to be with citrus. Citrus. That means citrus will go up one nothing. Lenny, what do you think? Well, just to clarify, because citrus can be kind of broad. Do we mean like <laughs> express citrus peel? In any way uh, that it in any way it could be you could be express okay, okay. citrus peel it could be a slice of citrus in the drink it's okay. yeah it's, it's it's a general category that allows you the creativity could okay. be a rough right. bourbon you pour in a whole bunch of orange juice and right. call it a day. got it okay so I will then qualify and say uh, there's there's no world that I've ever said like I'm going to do a few dashes of bitters in my <laughs> neat board. It's a good I point, would, I think. Fashion, but not in a neat board. Right, right. But, I agree with the, the Katie concept for cocktails, yes. Yes, exactly. But there is a word. That, that being said, I, I will say, I got, I wouldn't say I got into an argument, but somebody was uh, uh, dissing Angostura bitters and proclaiming them as basic at a house 
party of sorts I was at. And I didn't know the guy very well, so I didn't want to like pounce all over him and be like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But oh, I would say, listen jump here, dummy. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to pick one bitter, of course it's Angostura bitters. Right. If you got one, which at this house, the guy had one. And I would go farther, and I'm sorry I'm totally railroading this conversation, but I would go farther and say, if I was going to drink bitters, it would be Angostura bitters. There's no other bitters. <laughs> I and I would drink some right now if I had some. But uh, to the point of complimenting a bourbon or, or any pour, uh, I think an expressed orange peel over a neat pour, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. No other form of citrus other than oils from the peel, maybe the peel dropped in, and then we're good. <laughs> Why do you got to do the move? You gotta well, do a move. You guys can see. Nobody can hear that move, but I gotta do it. <laughs> There's a move that uh, is involved. Folks. If you are expressing, <laughs> then you have to have a move with the expression, don't you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so here's where we're at. That was long-winded to say a way to say that citrus is better. Uh, we're putting so. a lot of thought into this, okay? We're and not it's just good. It's picking. good. It's a show. We're supposed to do that, so I like it. I like it. So right now, citrus is up two nothing over bitters. Ryan, what do you think? You know, uh, I was gonna be a little selfish here uh, <laughs> and tell Lenny's great uh, explanation and reasoning. Uh, I was uh, tilted door towards the bitters. Uh, but, uh, to Lenny's point, I have never just added bitters to a neat pour of, of bourbon or whiskey. And so, uh, I, I, with Lenny's, um, thoughts behind all this, he convinced me to, uh, change my mind and go citrus as boring as that is now we're three zero with citrus. <laughs> Uh, it's all Lenny's fault, so there you go. Yeah, it's Lenny's fault. That means citrus <laughs> moves on. All right, round number two. Lenny, you're going to be first. What do you think is going to enhance some bourbon, smoke, or water? Mm. Um, I'll go less. I'll go short-winded on this one and just say water and rationale being there are plenty of bourbons that I do, in fact, add water to because – my sweet spot is like up to 110, much higher. I'll totally try it. I'll always try it by the maker's intent, and then I'll dial it down to my liking. So because I do water and smoke again, it's more cocktail oriented for me. Okay. Okay, he goes water. All right, that means water goes up uh, one nothing. What do you think, Ryan? I love a good smoke cocktail, but uh, given the parameters of the uh, bracket challenge to enhance a whiskey, uh, I would have to say water enhances a whiskey. A smoke adds and complements a whiskey, certainly in a cocktail. It also maybe covers up some of the intention of of uh, of the uh, whiskey. And so I think water certainly enhances it better than smoke does. Okay. Okay. That means water is up to nothing. So that's where we're at. McNew, you're next. Yeah, so smoke is also moving into cocktail territory for me. Like a smoke old, smoked old fashioned is great, but I'm going to go with water for a neat pour. Water. Okay, that means water moves on. All right, round number three. Up first is going to be Ryan. Infusions or ice? And I think this kind of goes hand in hand with the previous uh, uh, round. Uh, ice is certainly a form of water, as I think everyone <laughs> realizes. <laughs> and so, really? Really? I, I think so. Right? That is I mean, deep. You know, that is deep, buddy. Yeah. I know. Well, you know, I don't want to uh, <laughs> overestimate the IQ of the audience here, but right. I, ice is a form of water. All right. And so I'm going to have to stick with, uh, with uh, my water choice from before and say ice over infusions. Ice over infusions. Okay. Ice goes up one nothing. McNew, what do you think? Yeah, so with infusions, like if you buy an infused bourbon, it's probably not great. Right. And I'm not going to do that at home unless I want it to be a cocktail. So yeah. I'm going to go with ice too. Ice. I, I, to me, uh, infusions, not really at all something I'm interested in. The ice, not really interested in either. But when I'm out working the barbecue pit, if I'm going to have bourbon, I like it over ice. That, that, that enhances that bourbon experience for me, which I don't necessarily like. When a, a hot summer day uh, grilling. Uh, the, the little ice does enhance it, so I got to go ice here. So ice yeah. moves on. Y'all disappoint me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, McDew, what do you think here? You're going to be first. Proper glassware or letting it breathe? What do you think enhances a bourbon? Let it breathe, oh. let it breathe. So 
in a former life, when I traveled a lot for work, I was notorious for just using the plot, like the paper hotel cups. I didn't give a shit about glassware because I was not bringing it with me. I'm still on the tier team. Glassware doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go with letting it breathe. Letting it breathe. Okay. Okay. I, I do think that there's a difference with the proper glassware. I think these are two strong ones. This is one of the ones that angered me that they're against one another because I think it, these could be the finalists easily. Um, I, I do think proper glassware is important, but you know what? At the end of the day, I always like it. I like the I do like the idea of letting it breathe because you get to see how it it does change, and I, I think that that's that's a way to you know en enhance it that can be fun. And uh, I don't know that I'm always doing that, but there are times, particularly when we're doing tastings, it's fun to revisit them and after they've had some air to it. So I'm going to say letting it breathe I means that's up to nothing. Uh, Katie, you're next. I agree that letting it breathe changes it. Absolutely. It can make a huge difference, but I don't believe it necessarily enhances it. If it's a, like a new bottle of a higher proof whiskey that I'm really wanting that I'm getting that change I want with letting it breathe. I think I can accomplish the same thing with ice or water typically. And, but I, with enhancing it, I'm going with the experience of the bourbon. And so even though the flavor isn't necessarily changing for me with the glassware, my experience enjoying it absolutely changes based on what glassware I'm using, especially when it's got a, a logo that I like it, even down to <laughs> absolutely nothing. But the fact that it has a brand logo on it that I enjoy and I see it and it's a pretty glass and it makes me feel fancy. So it's enhancing my experience. So I'm going with glassware. Glassware. I think that was well thought out. Uh, good job. All right, Lenny, you're next. Well, I, Upper Mc glassware or letting it breathe? So, like, Mc you brought up a good point about, like, if one finds themselves in a hotel or traveling and uh, they have not brought their own proper glassware, sometimes you're reduced to sipping bourbon out of a hotel cup, be it paper or plastic. And uh, that that ruins my fucking night when that happens. <laughs> uh, I almost it almost never happens because I'll pack. You plan ahead. You plan ahead. I, I'll even pack silicone wear with me. I have one of those silicone nose and glasses. If I'm like a motorcycle trip or something, I fucking hate drink, drinking out of a hotel cup. <laughs> and I don't. I do like so sometimes like I'm in my rack house now. Sometimes I'll pull a sample and forget about it, and then I'll come in the next morning and be like, "Fuck yeah, it breathed all night. I'm gonna sip on it this morning." <laughs> right. But all in all, the two being considered, it's proper glassware by a million miles for me. Okay. Okay. I do like those uh, little things on Amazon that packs two glens. It's a hard case that you can put. Yeah. Uh, those are great for traveling for sure. Yeah, another it was or and something. They have one. It has yeah. a nice zip up container mm -hmm. for the glass, and they have little travel bottles with like silicone on the outside of the glass to travel, mm -hmm. and all fits into a case. Make some nifty stuff these days for traveling yeah. with your proper glassware. Oh, yeah, so does the bar to go. That's bar That's to right. go dot com. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Ryan. Here's where we're at. We're at, we're at a, we're deadlocked. It, it started out two two uh, two nothing, then it was two two now. So what do you got? I was not ready for this kind of pressure this evening. Right. <laughs> so let's start with that. Uh, I am feeling the pressure. I think um, with what Katie was saying, the this is about enhancing and not changing the, the whiskey. Uh, and as hypocritical as this is going to sound, because I'd say 95% of the time I'm drinking uh, a, a glass that's out of a rocks glass. Um, right. To Katie's point, this has a nice, uh, you know. We've got the Thompson uh, logo on there. It's customized, uh, special. And it, and it was a gift, and I, you know, it was a reminds me of that that time when I, I was received that. Uh, so that certainly is enhancing my experience. Uh, I do think the proper glassware will can help enhance the whiskey, although I don't often change up my glassware. But I've I've got to give a nod to the proper glassware and agree with uh, Lenny and Katie on this one. All right, proper glassware moves on. Our final four is going to look like this. Citrus will be taking on water and ice will take on glassware. Mm. Round number five, I am first. Citrus or water? Uh, this one's a, an easy one for me. I never, I don't use water. So um, citrus occasionally. Yeah, that, that could, that could be something that uh, I, I would prefer out of the two. I would prefer a little citrus, like, 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 like Lenny said, you know, zest, that would be good. So citrus, citrus for me, Katie. I am going to agree that I think water can open it up, especially if it's a little too hot for my personal experience. But overall, I think 
just that that waft of an orange peel over top mm-hmm. that Good. even if it's just the smell is really enhancing the experience altogether so citrus okay. citrus citrus is up to nothing lenny so i feel like enhance like the, the the semantic discussion of enhance and what we're talking about here has a lot of weight but given the choice if somebody poured me a, a glass of 108 proof or something that said would you like an expressed orange peel over that or two drops of water i'm always going to say two drops of water gun to my head that's the answer um okay. no water water okay that's weird but okay <laughs> <laughs> so weird. All good. right. Two drops of Mr. Pib. Two drops of Mr. Pib. So uh let's see here. Ryan the last option, Mr. Pib. Mr. Pib. <laughs> yeah. Mr. I was gonna say I didn't know Mr. Pib was an option. I might have to try that. Let's see. <laughs> That'd be weird. Can I can I get a pi a, a pi a pipette or a pipette? What do you do? Uh, Mr. Pib? I don't know. A pipette. A pipette. Uh, Dr. Pepper. We're not even getting the real thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Real Pib, thing. not Dr. Pepper McDonald. No. <laughs> No. All right, Ryan, what do you think? Citrus or water? Well, I, uh, I, if I'm looking to, I guess, I, enhance a whiskey, I, I've never looked to a, uh, an expression of citrus over my whiskey, although I do like that on occasion, but I'm, I'm agreeing with Lydia. I'm going water over citrus right. uh, to, to okay. enhance it and to change it up a little bit. I'm, I'm going water, so. Water. Okay, that means we're tied. McNew, it's going to go to you. Citrus or water? What do you think? Mm. personally not a big citrus girl unless it's like a lemon peel so i'm gonna go water water that means water will move to the finale where it will take on either ice or glassware round number six katie is first ice versus glassware easy glassware absolutely you can take your ice and save it for the cocktails there you go what about whiskey stones Yes, that should have been the winner, honestly, here. Okay, so our winner is Whiskey Stones. That really, we're just fighting for second best at this right, point. Right, right. Okay. Fair my my Fair landscaping enough. decorations are the number one. All right. <laughs> Lenny, ice or glassware? Uh, it's definitely glassware. glassware. Ice is throwing at people, maybe. All right. All right. Ryan, <laughs> ice or glassware? I'm gonna, I'll make it easy, right? No, no contest. I'm going glassware as well. Glassware. Okay. All right. Round number seven. This is it. Water versus glassware. What enhances a bourbon drinking experience? Lenny's going to be first. Uh, I, I'm glad that these two were the last two. I think they're the most valid of the list. But for me, it's glassware between the two. Glassware. That means glassware goes up one nothing. Ryan? Again, with the proper semantics and the uh, meaning of enhance, uh, I got to give a nod to glassware as well. Uh, although, you know, a, a drop or two of water on occasion might uh, be fun, but uh, certainly a nod to glassware. Glassware. Okay. All right, McNew, glassware or water? All right. So hear me out. Even if you go to like a newer distillery and they might give you like the plastic tasting cups, they're still going to give you a water dropper. So I'm going to go give water some life. Water. Water has life in this game. Where it now goes against glassware down two to one, and it goes to me. I'm going to end this thing. It's glassware. It is glassware. 100%. Yeah. Water. Versus water. Yeah. Water is gone. Yeah. I think uh, that's what I would choose for sure. So that's what I'm going with here. So there it is, folks. Proper glassware. That is going to be the way that you enhance your bourbon drinking experience. And not a bad thing. I think that uh, ends up being a pretty darn good winner, particularly because the way I like to drink whiskey is neat, and uh, that is in line with that. Give me a proper glass, bottle of whiskey, and we've got a party. So there you go. All right. Well, we'll wrap this one up, as we always do, by talking about where people can find us. Katie, we're going to start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me over on Instagram at Katie Proof. All right. Mr. Lenny. You can find me and the rest of Deerhammer on social media at Deerhammer on the web at Deerhammer.com. We can order our whiskey shipped to your door and you can come visit us in beautiful Buena Vista, Colorado. All right, Ryan. Across all socials at 10th MTN Whiskey, our website's 10thwhiskey.com. That's 10TH Whiskey with an E. All right, McNew. On Instagram at McNew ABV. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got that company website, that thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. We put our previous shows, or blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see me. The ABV Barrel Shop, the place where you can try before you buy. We've got a lot of cool stuff going on. 
We've got uh, an inventory reduction sale going on right now. Some uh, some closeouts and things like that happening. Oh, it's just it's wild. It's a crazy place to be. So check us out online, abvbarrelshop.com. Follow us on social media, ABV Barrel Shop. All right, McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. Finance will have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. 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 Peace. Before we let you go, let's talk about one last thing, the ABV Barrel Shop in the St. Louis community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on a couple of things. First of all, single barrels. We are the place where single barrels live. We go to distilleries, taste through the whiskey, select the best barrel, and have it shipped to our store where we present it to you, our customers, by allowing you to try before you buy. We're also known for the classes that we have in our education center in the store, as well as the events we have with industry professionals from the bourbon business. If you're in the St. Louis area, please come by and visit us at 6 Fox Valley Center in Arnold, Missouri. Or at a minimum, at least sign up for our email and text distribution so you know exactly what's going on in our shop over at abvbarrelshop.com. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.